Hey, what's up, YouTube family? It's Pastor KJ from Radiant Church, and I'm so excited for you to join us for today's sermon. We have such a powerful sermon in store. I believe it's going to strengthen you, challenge you, and encourage you. So get ready for this message. Also, share this message with friends, family members, coworkers, everyone you know. I believe it will change their life. Get ready to jump into the Word of God with us today. If you're taking notes, the title of my message is Action Required. Everyone say Action, action. Required. Let's do it again. Everyone say action. action. Require. Require. Awesome. So if you are going to follow Jesus, if you are going to have faith, if you are going to walk into the things of God, I want you to know something. Action will be required. And there's this philosophy, maybe even this theology that's just walking around, that's just going around saying, oh, God will do it. Oh, God to make it happen. Oh, God to make a difference. Oh, God to change it. God to move. Yes, 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 God will. But God requires the participation of earth. All throughout the Bible, you see this phrase and you see this relationship between heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. There has to be an agreement between heaven and earth, which means action is always required from earth. Here's the recipe and the ingredients of a miracle. The recipe and the ingredients of a miracle is you have faith in heaven and you have works on earth. You have faith in heaven and you have works on earth. And when those two things come together, I don't know, it's probably like gas in a, gas in a match. I don't, I don't understand it, but something dynamite happens when those two things come together. And that's why Jesus was so beautiful. He was vertical and horizontal. Jesus was a picture of earth and heaven agreeing. Jesus was a picture of earth and heaven kissing because he was 100% God and 100% man, not 50-50. So Jesus could walk around and do miracles every time because he was the propitiation of heaven and earth combined. He was the embodiment of logos, the word with us. He was the embodiment of faith and works trapped in one body. So when he touched somebody, they got healed. When he spoke, it happened. Why? Because he was the propitiation of earth and heaven agreeing. So those two things have to happen. In other words, earth can try to do something all day, but if heaven doesn't agree with it, nothing happens. Heaven could want to do something all day, but if earth doesn't agree with it, nothing happens. And I feel someone like, well, Pastor KJ, I need some Bible. I'll show it to you. When God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the first thing he did was go consult Abraham. He said, Abraham, I'm going to burn this place down. And Abraham said, wait, what if I found 45 righteous? And God said, okay, if you find 45 righteous, I won't burn it down. How did he have the gall to negotiate with God? I'll tell you, because he understood something. Heaven and earth has to agree. When Abraham was a representative on earth, not agreeing with God, burning it down, God paused. Why? Because without us, God won't. But without God, we can't. Without us, God won't. But without God, we can't. So then Abraham said, okay. And then he went trying to find 45 righteous. He said, what about 40? God said, okay, find 40. He negotiated God all the way down, I think, somewhere to around 10. He couldn't find 10. And finally, he acquiesced his will to God, and he said, okay, God, burn it down. He moved, and God burnt it down. But he consulted Abraham first because without earth, heaven won't, but without heaven, earth can't. So in order for something to happen, in order for us to have faith, action is required. Action is required. And now when you get this principle and you get this this theological concept, you can see it all throughout the threading of the Bible. Now things will begin to make sense. That's why you pray. You pray because God has the power to change anything. He has the power to keep the school safe. He has the power to turn around the nations. But he needs the permission from you. Now, I know you guys are saying, why would God ever, ever, ever need permission from mankind? Sounds blasphemous, right? A little bit. But think about it. God gave dominion and authority of the earth to man. Okay, let me, let me show it to you deeper. Let me prove it to, to maybe the, the skeptic person in the room. Why would I say such a, a bold statement? When we sinned, why didn't Jesus just fix it from heaven? 
Like, have you ever thought about it? Sometimes you Christians got to think a little bit. I'm glad I wasn't a Christian because I did a lot of thinking before I got saved. So once I got saved, I could think and be saved, right? So think of this as a Christian. You're God. So if you're God and you can, in essence, do whatever you want, why would you step out of heaven into a womb, sit in a placenta, be born, be burnt, get your umbilical cord cut, Walk around pooping in diapers. See, you never knew Jesus had a diaper on. You never thought about it. It probably wasn't a real diaper, but whatever they had, that was his diaper. He walked around learning words like mama and dada. He had to learn how to speak. He had to drink water. He had to poop. Imagine being with Jesus and he like, I got the bubble guts. <laughs> Jesus like, hold on, I got to poop. You're like, wait, you're Jesus. Yes, and I have to poop. Imagine Jesus playing with toys. You try to take him, you try to take him to the jacuzzi, he's just walking on the pool. This is Jesus. And he grew up, he worked with his dad. And he went through, this is God we're talking about. He went through all of this, and then the creator was subject to the creation. He was beat, flogged, sped upon, mocked, stretched on the cross, broken, cattle nine tails, and he was beaten and he bled. And he died. If you have all power and all control, why would you do that? Now, someone in here, well, he wanted to do it like that. No, he didn't. Let's go to the Garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> Father, there's another way. Let this cup pass from me. On, now, let me show you why there wasn't another way. Because Genesis 1, 26 through 28, it says, God had given dominion to mankind over the earth. What does that mean? It means that God acquiesced the rights of earth to mankind. Why would God allow so much evil to happen in the world? God didn't, you did. Why would God allow Dennis and babies to die? God didn't, you did. Why would God allow school shootings? You took prayer out of school. You took Bibles out of school. You took the presence of God out of school. And you want to ask, why would God allow? We allowed it. We should have been on that school board. We're going to keep the Bible. We're going to keep some prayer. We're going to keep the Holy Ghost. We're going to keep the Spirit of God. We ain't going, but you was in there scared to lift your hand up. Why don't we go to these schools and say, hey, what do we need to do to get the Bibles back in here? We'll pay for them. We'll volunteer. You want us to pray for the school but remove our Bible? That's a whole different sermon. Back to my point. Action required. <laughs> so, because of that theological concept, we have a hermeneutics principle, the law of first mention. When God first mentioned the earth, he acquiesced the rights of the earthly rights to us, that, that was the authority, right? Okay, we got it down. So now, a miracle will require Earth's participation. A miracle will require Earth to agree, and it would require Earth's participation. Now, let me go to the Bible, Genesis 22, and we can start a sermon now. You guys enjoying this? Is it good? Let's do it. Genesis 22. I'll give you guys a second to get there. First book of the Bible, though. I was at the back of the book, Pastor KJ. I got like 20 minutes, so I'm going to hit this quick. Okay, maybe 25. Whoever said take your time, I better not see you leave church early. I know that much. Take your time, Pastor. I got to go, though. You know, we got reservations. <laughs> okay, she said she's staying. Let's do it. Um, let's do it. Verse 1, it says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. And then God said, take your son, your only son, look at the language of God, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering 
on a mountain, I will show you. At that point, I would have left Christianity, but Abraham didn't. Verse 3 says, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded the donkey. I just want to stop here. Have God ever gave you instruction, and then early the next moment, you started moving? Or did you get up the next morning and start doubting and questioning and making sure it's God and arguing with him? Okay, that's free. Let's get back to the Bible. It says, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. And on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. Man, this man about his action. See why he's called the father of faith now. And he himself carried the fire in the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? <laughs> That's you, bro. Um, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they had reached the place, God had told him about it. Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound, which means he tied up his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar. Some of y'all need to tie up your girlfriend and lay her on the altar or your boyfriend. But let me get out your business. We have a relationship series coming up. It says, on top of the wood. <laughs> then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven. See, look at this earth and heaven relationship. I love it. Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me, your son, your only son. Verse 13. Abraham looked up, and there in the thick of it, that's a cool word, the thick of it. You know, being the thick of it, the thick of it, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. I got chill bumps right there, y'all. So the first thing I want to start with is God tested Abraham. See, mama, I hope you're watching online. Y'all, don't test me. God tested Abraham. Just want to throw that out there, mama. Um, God tested Abraham. Now, why would God do such a thing? Why would he test Abraham? The reason why God tested Abraham is because what's not tested can't be trusted. What's not tested can't be trusted. And before God could truly, truly trust Abraham, he had to first test him. Now, I don't think that God test Abraham so God can do what Abraham so God can know what Abraham would do. I believe God tested Abraham so Abraham would know what Abraham would do. God needed Abraham to know just who he was. See, some of you guys don't know how loyal you are to God until you're tested. Some of you guys don't know how faithful you are to God until you're tested. Some of you guys don't know how bold you are until you're tested. You have no idea. Sometimes you have to be offered to be thrown into the fire to know I got blazy faith. I can't know I got blazy faith unless I'm in a blazy circumstance. So I don't believe that God was testing Abram for his own sake. I believe he tested Abraham so Abraham could know what he carried. So Abraham could know who he was. And I love the test. The test was so, so strong. And it was so beautiful. And it was so sequenced. Let me explain the test. God said, Abraham, I'm going to cut a deal with you. 
I'm going to make, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give you righteousness, right standing with me. You'll be the father of righteousness and everyone else in Abraham will be in right standing with God because of your faithfulness. And I would give you a nation, a nation would pass out of you. He said, now, here's why I'm going to give you all this, Abraham, is because I gave dominion to earth. Which means everything is mine on heaven and on earth, but I need a representative on earth that would actually be the father of my people. And when you become the father down here, and I'm the father up there, there's heaven and earth now kissing and agreeing. My God. So at that point, he said, because you're going to be the father down there, I need to know you got the same heart as the father up here. So what is the father up here about to do that I need to see if the father down there will do? The father up here is about to have his only begotten son sacrificed for the redemption of the earth. Before I can allow you to be a father, I need you to be willing to do the same thing for my people. So now you see that the story of Abraham is actually adjacent to the story of Christ because when you look at it, here's what happened. His only begotten son was to be sacrificed. The very next day he got up. And then let me tell you what he did. He prepared the wood. He he, he took the wood, he carried the wood. So now Abraham is carrying the wood to his own son's sacrifice. You fast forward and you go to the gospel, all of a sudden you see Jesus dragging his own cross. I'm just getting started, y'all. So then the next thing, You want to know how far away they were from Mount Moriah? Three days. So when God said, you're going to sacrifice your son, at that very moment in Abraham's head, his son was dead. And for three days and three nights, he had to travel with a dead son. Why would God do that? Because God would have to have his son dead for three days and three nights. And he said, if I got to go three days without my son, I need to see how you go three days without your son. Oh, but we're just getting started because action is always required. Action is always required. So then he traveled for three days. And then when he went up the mountain, he went up the mountain of Mount Moriah. You guys missed it because that was the Old Testament name. Let me give you the New Testament name. He went up Calvary's mountain. So he goes up Calvary's mountain. And then all of a sudden, he started prophesying, and he didn't even know it. He said, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. He would provide himself. In other words, he said that the Lord himself will provide a sacrifice right here on our behalf. And it said, this is the place that's called the Lord will provide. Translation, this place is called Jireh. This is where we met Jehovah Jireh, our great provider. It's not just for money, it's for redemption. So all of a sudden, we see Jehovah Jireh. Now, why is that Jehovah Jireh? Why is this the place Jehovah Jireh? Because this is the place where the Son of God will provide his blood so we can become sons of God. This is the place where the Son of God becomes a man so sons of men can become sons of God. So the Lord himself will provide a sacrifice. And you guys know the story. God didn't really make him sacrifice his son. God stopped and he sent a temporary ram to temporary pay for what he would pay for permanently. He said, just put 20 on it. I'm going to come and put eternity on it. I'm going to come and put redemption on it. I'm going to come and put salvation on it. I'm going to come and put grace on it. I'm going to come and put forgiveness on it. I'm going to come and put breakthrough on it. Transformation on it. So we met Jehovah Jireh. But I love the faith of Abraham. I love the faith of Abraham. I love it because he was unlike most of us, and I believe that's why he's the father. I believe that's why he's our father, Abraham. And I believe that's why he represents the people of God on earth. Here's why. Because he did what most of us could never do, and that's to trust God when it don't make sense. Trust God when it don't make sense. See, if you're a person of faith, you need no explanation. 
No explanation is required. If you're not a person of faith, no explanation will work. Let me say it again. If you're a person of faith, no explanation is required. Oh, but if you're a person of doubt, no explanation will work. Abraham had no required expectations. Why? Because he trusted God. He believed in God. He said, I don't know what God going to do, but whatever God going to do, God going to provide. Because if God take my son, he can raise my son. He can heal my son. He can restore my son. He knew even though it don't make sense, it makes faith. Why? Because faith is acting like God is telling the truth. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. I like to say it this way. Faith is acting like it is so, even when it ain't so. In order that it may be so, simply because God said so. So I'm at the back missing, so let me rewind. Faith is acting like it is so, even when it ain't so. In order that it may be so, simply because God says so. Faith is walking in God. Faith is trusting God. Faith is action required. I ain't got much time, so go to James chapter 2. We got to be quick. We got to be quick. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Action required. If you're going to the next level, action will be required. Well, God's going to pay for my business. Yeah, maybe. After actions require. Yeah, God built this church. God funded it. He paid for it. He brought the people. Oh, but you better believe action was required. Let me tell you what God didn't do. Drive around the whole city looking for a building. Let me tell you what God didn't do. Negotiate. Let me tell you what God didn't do. Call people and invite them. Why? Because heaven and earth has to agree. God is saying, if you truly believe me, it's not waiting on me. It's walking in me. Yeah. See, the Bible never says stand by faith. It never said think by faith. It said walk by faith. Walking is action. The moment Abraham got a word, we don't see the scripture where the Bible says cut some wood, get your son, get a knife. <laughs> Load up servant. No, God said, sacrifice your son here. And he was gone. And Abraham's initiative and action did the rest. See, so you be in front of the house. God, I don't know what car you want me to take. God, I don't know where to go. God, what rope you want? See, you ain't got no faith. Grab a rope. Grab a car. Grab a knife. Don't grab a knife, but go. <laughs> Pastor told me to get a knife. No, I didn't. <laughs> James chapter 2, verse 14 says, and I just got to give you scripture because I know you probably wouldn't talk most of this. So all of a sudden, when I preach, I got to give scripture now because in the body of Christ, we have to have sound good theology. We have to have good theology. We live by this stuff. So no man should be up here giving his opinion. He should be preaching the Bible. So let's go to the Bible. James chapter 2 says this. To validate some of my claims that some of y'all may think is ridiculous. It says... What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Translation, what does it profit if you say you got faith but don't have action? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of food and one of you say to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled by faith. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Verse 17. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works. So he's saying it's dead. He's saying faith without works is dead. In other words, it doesn't exist. You can't have faith and not have works because they are power twins. They are connected. They're tied together. So if someone says they got faith and they're not moving, they're lying. I didn't say it. That's what the Bible said. It says, thus, also faith by itself, if it does not have works or action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Okay, let's break this down. 
He's talking to religious people. So I'll just trust God. I got faith in God. I believe in God. I'm going to sit here and wait on God. Yeah, you're going to be waiting forever. It was like that woman. There was a flood, and she was stuck on top of the roof. And there was a flood, and all of a sudden, a helicopter came. They said, ma'am, come on. I'm not getting on that helicopter. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. Somebody climbed up the roof with a ladder. Hey, ma'am, come down the ladder with me. I ain't going down no ladder. I'm waiting on God. Waiting on God. Waiting on God. They said another helicopter. Ma'am, you are about to drown. You're about to die. Come on, get in the helicopter. I ain't getting on no helicopter. I'm waiting on God. Waiting on God. Waiting on God. The lady drowned and died. She went to heaven. She was, <coughs> God, why did you let me die? He said, girl, I sent a helicopter. I sent a ladder and another helicopter to get you. You wouldn't go, so I had to bring you home. Waiting on God. Some of y'all been waiting on God too long. God said, you're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. God, we're just waiting on you to move. Have you not read the book? I already moved. I moved up the grave. I bust open the ground. I resurrected with power and victory. I'm seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for you. I'm moving. What are you doing? So, 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 every miracle in the Bible had action required. Action required. All of the miracles, all the miracles. In other words, here's how faith works. Faith simply means I pray like it's all up to God and I work like it's all up to me. I pray like it's all up to God, but I work like it's all up to me. I'm believing for God to fill our church. We're gonna pray, we're gonna intercede, we're gonna kick the devil in his chin in a prayer meeting. Then we're gonna print a thousand cards and pass them out to the city and pray over them and invite our friends, family members, and coworkers to church. It's not this or that, it's this and that. Why? Because faith without works is dead. I'm not working to try out my faith. I'm working because my faith. See, I'm passing out cars because God said he'll fill our church. I'm praying for people because God said he will heal. See, I'm moving because of faith, not in replacement of faith. See what I'm saying? Every miracle Jesus ever did, because he wanted to teach us what I'm teaching you right now. Do you know every miracle that Jesus ever did? Do you know that all the miracles had instruction attached? All the miracles, every single one that Jesus ever did, they all had instruction attached. In other words, before Jesus turned water into wine, you want to know what he said? He said, fill up the water pots. Fill up the water pots. Jesus was saying, if you will fill up these dirty water pots, I will turn water into wine. Could Jesus be telling us to fill up the church and he would turn sinners into saints? Just asking. Every miracle re Required action and sometimes they don't make sense imagine if you're Moses and you have Pharaoh's army behind you coming to kill you and you're crying out to God and instead of him coming out with fire and lightning bolts and strong winds he says Moses stretch out your rod God this don't make and in the world <laughs> you know what I'm saying like this don't make sense Moses stretching out your rod doesn't make sense, but it does make faith. David, you getting a rock and a slingshot to fight a giant, it doesn't make sense, but it does make faith. If you're a lame man and you can't walk, Jesus said, take up your mat. Taking up your mat doesn't make sense, but it makes faith. When Lazarus was dead in the grave, they said, unwrap his grave clothes. That don't make sense, but it does make faith. God told Noah to build an ark. There had never been a flood. That don't make sense, but it does make faith. They thought Noah was crazy until it started raining. Building your life on the rock, who is Christ, it may look like it don't make sense, but when rains come and winds blow, all of a sudden, those that laughed at you are going to start calling you and saying, 
What Bible verse is you reading? What Bible study are you going to? What church are you attending? Because it may not make sense, but it will always make faith. It may not make sense, but it will always make faith. Oh, give God a 10 second praise break in this room. 10, nine, eight. What doesn't make sense will always make faith. And that's the power of our God. I want to show you something. Whenever God gets ready to do something in your life, action will be required. <laughs> I got a funny little story to share with y'all. It's hilarious. Got this little story to share with y'all. I remember when I first started my business, there was this guy, he was a multimillionaire. And they said, hey, he wants to meet with you and talk over business. Can you go to his house tomorrow at 5? I said, yes, sir. I can be at his house. I can be there at 4, 58. Let's go. I went to the closet. I found the best suit. I found the best tie. I didn't know how to put on the tie, so Pastor Tip put on the tie. I had my cufflinks. This man's like, who is this crazy guy with a full suit? He had on basketball shorts and a t-shirt. I didn't know what he was going to be wearing. But I seen the pursuit of happiness he had on the tie. Praise God, I was wearing a tie. I remember I walked in there. I was ready. I was looking good, smelling good, walking good, and feeling good. Hey, sir, how you doing? KJ Johnson, so good to meet you. So glad to be here. Can't wait to uh, talk business. I sat down at the seat. I was professional. I put my leg over my knee. I was ready to talk business, looking good, smelling good. I mean, I was ready. And I'm sitting there, and I'm talking. I'm talking about our products, and I'm talking over everything. And then all of a sudden, I heard, and I looked down, and I had the bubble guts. So at that point, I was trying to hold it as best I could. So I'm holding it. I'm trying to talk, and I'm holding it. And they're getting worse. And I'm holding it. And they're getting worse. I said, sir, do you have a bathroom? He said, it's all the way down that hall. Y'all, this stuff finna fall out my butt. I'm walking down this hall like this. <laughs> and I'm walking down the hall. I'm like, Jesus, 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 don't do it, Jesus, don't do it. I'm walking down the hall, and then all of a sudden, I get in the bathroom. I blew this man bathroom off. I looked around, made sure no one saw me. I got the tissue, and I wiped up real good. And then when I got done wiping, I started looking for the flush. I turned this way, no flush. I turned this way, no flush. I turned directly to the back, no flush. Oh my gosh. There's no flush. I sat there in despair. I said, okay, what are we going to do? Jesus, baby Jesus, big Jesus, all the Jesuses. Somebody help me. I'm sitting here. I blew this man's bathroom up with boo-boo. Boo-boo was everywhere. Boo -boo 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 and there was no flush. Finally, I decided I need to exit this man's house through the window, and I need to run, and I need to do what Scar told Simba to do. Run, Simba, run far, and never return. That's some good advice for me in this moment. So finally, after wiping up and everything was good, I looked. I said, I'm going to run and never return. And then I got up, and all of a sudden, the toilet flushed. And then I noticed something. The reason why the toilet didn't flush is because I was sitting on it and it was motion activated. See, rich folks, why you gotta do all that? It was motion activated. And then I found out something. The toilet wasn't gonna move until I moved because it was motion activated. Church, I got news for you. God is motion activated. And God said, I can't move until you move. I can't move until you move. See, so you gotta know something, church. You're not waiting on a move of God. God is waiting on a move from you. And God says, when you move, he'll move. Just like that, when you move, he'll move. Just like that, when you move, he'll move. Just like that, I ain't never scared. Jesus Christ got my back. Oh, come on, somebody. You gotta move. I'm gonna move out to this business. I'm gonna move out to this ministry. I'm gonna move out to this prayer meeting. I'm gonna move out. 
I'm going to trust God. I'm going to leave this job and do the job he told me to do. I'm going to go pray for the schools. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to move. Because action is always required. Action is always required. Can I get my keyboard up? Action is always required. If you're going to see the hand of God, if you're going to see the fruit of God, if you're going to see the ways of God, you have to move. You have to move. And what the devil is doing, he's coming to scare you so you don't move. When Goliath came, what he did, he taunted the children of Israel until they froze. And they just shook in terror. And there was a wild boy from the field that said, if y'all won't move, I'll move. And he ran up. He went to Saul. He said, Saul, I'm sorry your armor can't fit. He grabbed the rock. He grabbed five smooth stones. He said, I am willing to move. And when he moved, there was the acting of man with the anointing of God meeting right there on the field to take down a giant. Maybe it's not that God hasn't anointed you. Maybe there's no action. That's why you're still facing your Goliaths. Maybe there's no action. That's why you're still dealing with generational curses. Maybe there's no action. That's why your business won't grow. God is waiting on you to move. And everybody that God ever used in the Bible was always doing something. Didn't you notice that when Elijah came and called Elisha, Elisha was plowing, the son of Shaphat? Did you notice that when Jesus came and called the disciples, they were fishing? Did you notice that when Samuel came and called David, he was shepherding? Why? Because everybody God would use is always moving. I had a group of friends, and we all had a dream of having a ministry and having a church and that God would do this. And I don't feel like at that time I was the most qualified out of my group of friends to do this. But I had one trait. They loved God, I loved God. They prayed, I prayed. They were faithful, I was faithful. They were holy, I was holy. We had all things in common except for one. I would notice that when it was time to do something, they would freeze and I would move. And I think that's why God used me and not them in this area. Because he knew I was crazy enough to believe him, and I would need no explanation when he gave instruction. You want to be used by God? Need no explanation when he gives instruction. Wow. I pray you was blessed by that message. I pray it spoke to you and encouraged you, challenged you, and stretched you. Share with your friends, family members, coworkers. Share with everyone you know, and I pray their life will be impacted as well. If you would like to be a part of Radiant Ministry, a part of Radiant Global, or get more information about our church, text 903-201-0606. Text more information. We will tell you all about our ministry. And also, if you would like to partner with Radiant financially, you can do that at RadiantChurchTSK.com and hit the Give tab. It is your generosity that fuels our mission and it empowers us to be able to do ministry all around the world. Thank you so much for your generosity and have a blessed day.